Hi, this is David. In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate Microsoft Excel using Visual Basic for Applications, often abbreviated as VBA. I used to work with VBA a lot years ago, and I've kind of forgotten about it. And part of the reason is because it's not uh, really apparent here in the toolbar ribbon. In fact, the tools I'm going to show you are on a ribbon that doesn't show up by default. If I go into File, Options, and Customize Ribbon, you'll see that there is this Developer ribbon that isn't checked. I'll check that, and now this Developer ribbon shows up. And that provides some of the tools that allow you to customize this. In particular, I have this Visual Basic Editor right here. And in here, I can add code to my worksheet. So if I know Visual Basic, then I can type in some code here. I'll give it a name. Okay, I'll call it sub gcast1. How about that? And then I'll say something like uh, range of A1. And IntelliSense helps me out a little bit here. If I press dot, uh, select. How about that? Dot brings up all the properties and methods of the object. And also, if I type uh, range, if I hit the control space bar, it does some auto complete for me. So it helps me out a little bit. You can see that there's, if there are parameters, I'll give you some hints as to what those parameters should be. I'll say A1 dot, uh, or how about instead of dot, I'll say equals quote. A, a, a and I'll do the same thing here. Range of A two equals B B B B. I don't really have to select it ahead of time. In fact, what I'll do is I'll once I'm done, I'll select how about A three right here. And so what this should do is put A A A A in cell A one and B B B B in cell A two and then select cell A three. If I run this you see that it did exactly that. So I can write code by hand in here, and that's that works, that works really well, it's very flexible, uh, but it's a little bit limiting in the sense that if I don't know the language really well, or I don't know the object model really well, I'll be constantly looking that up. Yes, IntelliSense helps, but there is an easier way. And let me show you that easier way. What I'm gonna do is close this worksheet right here, don't save it. Now what I'll do is I'll open up this worksheet here that I created in advance. And you'll see that there is, in fact, uh, a little bit of data in here that I've pre-populated. There's a date column and a quantity and a unit price and a total price. Total price actually has a formula in it right here. Um, and uh, what I can do is I can just go into my developer ribbon and select record macro. What I want to do here is I'm going to take all this and all this here create a new worksheet, I'll paste it in there. But what I want to do is rather than having um, formulas in here, I just want to have values there, not formulas. And I want to formulas, I want to format this as currency. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll record this macro. I'll call it GCAST2, all right? And this says I have to save it as a macro enabled worksheet, so I will, I'll click save on there. And that was enough to make that go away. And now, now I'm recording it. Let me hit Control A to select all the contiguous cells. I'll go Copy, Home, Copy. I'll create a new worksheet right here. I'll rename it. I'll call it GCAST-1234. All right. And then I'll paste, but I won't just paste. I'll paste just the values. And I notice, first of all, these are not formulas anymore. They are just numbers. But I also notice the date. I lost my date formatting. So here, so let me right click on that and say format this column A as a date, okay, and then format column D as currency, I like that, and then I'll just select that up here, and I think that's good enough. Let me stop here and stop recording, okay? And then here I have an option to save the script, that's good, so that if I go into my Visual Basic Editor under modules here, then I have the code that was generated. And this is code, I could run this code. Let me move these side by side so you can see what's going on. But there's a couple of problems with it. Uh, first of all, I don't really need this part anymore. So I can delete it. I can edit this. I can edit it to, to suit my own needs. And the other problem, another problem is that I'm assuming when I select 
cells range A1 to D15 that I'm actually on this sheet right here, but I might not be on that. I might be on some other sheet right here. So if I try to run it, it's gonna select these cells right here. Uh, so that's a problem. Let me get rid of that. There are a few problems here. You also notice when I create a new worksheet, it's, it gives a name sheet four, but in here, I'm telling it to select sheet two because that was the sheet that was created the first time I did this. So I've got a few things that I could get rid of here. Let me get rid of this one as well. All right. So why don't I do that? First thing I'll do is I'll make sure that I select the first worksheet. Even if I have a couple of them on here, uh, I want to say something like, how about sheets of, I'll call it sheet one dot select. I could also do sheets one by its index. Visual basic indexes are raised beginning with a number one, unlike most languages which begin with a number zero for their race. The first one is actually number one. Uh, then I say range of A1 to D15 select, and that works okay, except that what happens if I add more rows? Then I might miss those rows. I did, in this particular spreadsheet, I do have a range that I've created called my data. So I can tell it rather than specifying this right here, I can just tell it my data dot select and it'll select that. That's kind of nice. Uh, and then I'll copy it. Uh, I'll add a new <coughs> active sheet, select the new active sheet. Uh, I The new active sheet, uh, it probably won't be named sheet one. However, because I told it to sh create it after the first one, I know it'll be index two. So whenever I refer to this, I refer to it as sheets of two. I'll select it. I'll rename it. I don't want to rename it GCAST1234. That name uh, might already be taken. And in fact, if I run this macro twice, it'll definitely be taken. So what I want to do is say, let's do this. Instead of doing this, I'll actually random, create a random name from this. So let's do this here. I've got a formula. Right there is, right there. And what that does is says, okay, this math.rand formula will generate a random number between zero and one. I'll multiply that times 10,000. So now I'll have a four digit number, but there'll be something after the decimal point. So I'll convert it to an integer. So now I'll get rid of everything after the decimal point turn it into a string so that I can concatenate it. And then just in case there are any leading blanks, I'll apply this trim function. So this should be G cast dash, and then some number up to four digits. Uh, and then here's where I paste, but I want to paste values, not formulas. Uh, select, uh, I don't really care about that so much. This is what I care about right here is select column A, format that as a date. Select column D, format that as currency, and then select A1. And this should work. Let's find out here. If I run this, then it sure did. It created a new spreadsheet called G, or worksheet called GCAST-7055. Copied all the cells in here. These are no longer formulas, they're values. It formatted this as currency, and this is a date. Um, and it all worked, and I can run it multiple times because it's not reusing the same sheet name each time is generating this random sheet name each time. It's possible that after a thousand times I might repeat this and then I'd hit an error because the sheet already exists, but maybe I could put some conditional logic. I could put uh, something in here before I create this, you know, if put some logic to some conditional logic to make sure that I don't accidentally have the same sheet created twice. And the point is that I have all kinds of flexibility here. So I use the 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 macro recorder to generate my code and then I looked at it and I used my knowledge of Visual Basic and the object model within Excel to modify it and make it better. The last thing I want to show you is how to run this without going into this developer tool. So let me close this. I'll just move it over here. And you'll notice that over here on the view menu, which everybody has access to, there's this macros button. And if I click on view macros in here, GCAST2, I can just run it. That did it again, created another spreadsheet. I can also, under macros, I can delete it. Um, 
I don't, don't want to do that. Uh, I can edit this. I can step into it if I want to debug it. Uh, just one line at the time. Let's do that. Step into. And now it brings up my editor here. And if I press F8 on my keyboard, then one by one, I can actually see this. And this is really nice. You can see the actions as they are taking place and have access to a lot of developer tools in here. I can also uh, just open up the editor so I can edit this right here and change it. And finally, I can go into options and here I can, of course, put a description in here. That doesn't really do anything. That's just for documentation purposes. But one nice thing is to add a shortcut key. So if I wanted to be able to press control B, for example, to run this or control shift B to run this, it allows me to do that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll click OK here and say control shift B and close this. And now what will happen is if I hit control shift B on my keyboard, it ran that macro automatically. In this video, I've shown you how to create a VBA module to automate Microsoft Excel, either adding the code yourself, using the record button, or some combination of two, and then how to manage that using the options under the View Macros ribbon. This is David. Thank you for watching.